What's it like to be only one, three meters tall? Because he was so small, he was often bullied by the kids. They called him the brother of the seven dwarfs. He was always whispered about when he was shopping, and he was always ignored at the checkout. The cashier didn't see him because he was too short. As a train enthusiast, they would occasionally take a walk on the railway when he was bored and would occasionally sit by the railway all morning. Joe was curious and asked him what he was doing. Faye said he was watching the trains. Yes, that's how bored he was, waiting all morning to see the passing train. Joe doesn't understand, but he's shocked. On the way back, they meet Olivia. Joe only invites her to lunch. Over lunch, Faye shared his train watching story with him. When he was running a shop with his friend Henry. On weekends, a group of train enthusiasts would gather at their shop. They would share their train videos with each other. He didn't know how to drive and didn't have a video camera, so we could only watch from the sidelines. While the three of them were chatting, Joe's sick father called and said he couldn't find his medication. Joe rushes home, leaving the awkward to behind. Olivia says we can just eat and not talk all the time. Joe agrees. In the days that followed, Faye was no longer alone. Joe would follow him on his walks on the railway. They spent the afternoon watching the trains. When Faye didn't want to go out, Joe would drag him to his dining car to read. Only Joe couldn't help talking to him. Faye asked Joe if he promised not to talk to me. Joe retorts that I haven't talked to you in 20 minutes. Faye pulled his pocket watch out of his pocket and looked at it and said it was only 9 minutes. Joe couldn't believe he timed it. That day Olivia delivered a video camera. She wanted to help Faye fulfill her dream. When he saw the camera Olivia left behind, Joe grabbed Faye and started chasing the train without saying a word. And that's how Faye filmed her first train video. Then Olivia joined them on their railway wall. The three of them are traveling aimlessly along the railway track. The scenery is beautiful, but the woman is always worried that a train will pass by. After receiving a negative answer, she was relieved to taste the beef jerky that Faye had brought along. At the end of the afternoon's journey, the three of them rested in front of Faye's station. Some children were playing football in front of the dining car. Joe couldn't help but join them. Watching the children play without any inhibitions, Olivia thought of her dead son. A sudden pain of sadness washed over her, but she forced a smile on her face and got up to say goodbye to Faye. That day, Faye and Joe paid a surprise visit. They had arranged to watch Faye's train video together. Joe was kind enough to go to the kitchen to prepare dinner, leaving Faye and Olivia alone to chat. The house was bought by Olivia's ex-husband for a holiday, but now it's her escape from the grief of losing her son. She wonders why Faye has moved to this remote town. Faye makes a rare joke. He says he wants to live with Joe. At night, the three of them Saturday in rocking chairs and watch Faye's train videos. The video was boring, but the three of them watched it with great interest. After drinking, Joe was already drunk. Faye wanted to take Joe home. Olivia kept him. She put Faye in her son's bedroom and thoughtfully handed him a glass of water. The photo shows Olivia's son, who lost his life two years ago when he accidentally fell off a bar. The next morning, Olivia's ex-husband showed up at the door. He was puzzled to see a midget in his ex-wife's house. But even more unexpected was the presence of a hunky man who walked in next to him. Joe greets him and says he's seen pictures of him before. Olivia gestures for them to leave. The two of them politely left Olivia's house. But I don't know what the ex-husband said to Olivia. After that, Olivia never looked for them again. She didn't even say hello when she met them on the road. A man goes to get a library card. Instead, the administrator teases him with his eyes and compliments him on his cute chin. Faye is puzzled, but Joe is envious. Joe questions if what he says is true. Joe asks Faye to go to the pub for a drink. But Faye waits for the librarian. She asks Faye if she is here to play. Faye said she was waiting for a friend, and so did the woman. The woman told Faye a secret. She was pregnant. She didn't dare tell her gangster boyfriend because her family didn't approve of them being together. Faye didn't know what to say, but stayed with her quietly. While leaving the pub, the woman met her gangster boyfriend. He is furious to see his girlfriend with a midget. Faye tries to explain, but he can't even protect himself with his small frame. The man taunts him. You can't stop me. Faye is pushed away. The woman tells him to leave. Faye turns around and walks away. Of course he had a tempter, but he took it out where no one else could see it. That night, Faye lost sleep. He watched the passing trains out the window until the next morning. Faye took it out on the abandoned car at the door again. Joe brings a cup of coffee and apologizes for missing his appointment yesterday. Yesterday his father was suddenly very ill and has spent the whole day at home taking care of him. But Faye was indifferent to Joe's explanation. Joe asked him, you've apologized, what more do you want? But Faye kicked him out, saying she wanted to be alone. Joe left in disappointment. From that day on, Joe never showed up at Faye's doorstep again. Faye was alone again. He took walks alone, watched trains alone, 
But he had finally escaped loneliness, so how could he be willing to embrace it again? He went to Olivia's house, Saturday on the ground and waited. He wanted to ask Olivia himself what had happened. He waited for two days, and Olivia finally showed up. Only she kept complaining to the voice on the phone and even slammed the phone. Faye notices that Olivia doesn't seem to be doing too well, so he plucks up the courage to walk over to her, but is met with a rude shock. He asked Olivia how she was doing. Olivia shouts at him to get out. Faye tries to comfort her. She tells him to get the hell out of her house in the worst possible way. Faye is helpless inside. Faye went to the pub and drank alone. Unsurprisingly, he was once again the object of ridicule. He drank glass after glass until he couldn't take it anymore. He broke his glass, stood on the bar and said, I'm right here, see for yourselves, look hard. He was tired of the world, and equally tired of this ugly body. Even the stones on the tracks chose to go against him and he tripped over them. Just then, the roar of a train came in the distance. Faye raised his head and looked at the approaching train. He smiled with a look of seeming helplessness and relief. He just watched, not choosing to move. The next day, Faye woke up unharmed. It seems that his small size did not bring him all bad things. Looking at the crushed pocket watch, Faye smiled in relief. He returns to Olivia's house, only to find her lying on the floor. She'd overdosed on psychotropic drugs and was starting to lose her mind. She was saying over and over again that she wanted her baby back. Her ex-husband said he had an illegitimate child and wanted her to get back together with him. But how can someone else's child replace her only flesh and blood? Faye took Olivia to the hospital and went back to her house to clean up the dishes. When he's done, he dials the number Joe left. Joe picks up Faye and they go to the hospital to welcome Olivia. The three of them are now together. They sit in front of the station, chatting, talking about nothing. None of them brought up their bad past. After all, they're all alone. Faye was lonely because she was small. Joe was lonely because it didn't have any like-minded friends. Olivia was lonely because she lost her son for no reason. In fact, all of us have been lonely at one time or another. In our childhood, we may be lonely because we don't have any playmates. And when we grow up, we may be lonely because we don't know the right people. We are all lonely at different points. But it is undeniable that deep in our hearts, we all desire to love and to be loved. This is the 2003 American film, The Station Agent. A man ridiculed and ignored because of his short stature. Since the departure of his only friend, he has traveled alone along the railway to live in the ramshackle post he left behind. Unsociable, he is always accosted by the coffee vendor at the door and is almost hit twice by the same woman driver on his way to buy supplies. The three of them grew closer. They would always accompany the man to do something boring. The woman even gave him a video camera to fulfill his dream. Although each of them has a bad past, in the end, the lonely ones come together and become each other's companions. This story tells us that even though we are lonely at different points, we feel the same way. I am Bulldog Movie. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.